Hello and welcome to 34 Tower E. Today's video is on gravitational lensing, microlensing, the different visual phenomena observed in the process, and how it can be used to explore the depths of the universe. In 1912, Albert Einstein predicted that light could be bent by a gravitational body, an idea that he elaborated upon in his Theory of General Relativity, published in 1915. Among its many predictions was the idea that a concentration of mass distorted the fabric of space-time around itself. The effect this process would have on light was further elaborated upon by the Russian physicist Orest Kvalson in an article published in 1924. In the article, he described the halo effect produced by gravity when the observer, lens and source are all in near-perfect alignment. Einstein remarked upon this effect in 1936, stating that while such events were possible, there would be no hope of ever observing them, because such a lineup of objects is incredibly rare, and the effects would not be visible to the instruments at that time. Fast forward to today, and scientists call this concept gravitational lensing, and use it to study the light from distant galaxies, quasars, and stars that are normally undetectable to conventional telescopy. A gravitational lens occurs when the gravitational field of a massive foreground object distorts and magnifies the light from an object behind it. When light from the more distant object travels through this distorted area of space-time, its path is redirected around the centre of mass and can end up being concentrated as a point on the near side. Much like using a magnifying glass, albeit on a cosmic scale. While gravitational lensing applies to the use of bodies of mass on the scale of galaxies or galaxy clusters to act as the lens, the same effect can be achieved with far less massive bodies, such as stars, since they also distort space-time around them. When using a star as a lens, astronomers call this gravitational microlensing. In this case, we are observing the star behind the star we are using as a lens. Given the smaller distances between objects, and the greater relative velocities between them, microlensing events are over far quicker than in gravitational lensing, with most microlensing events lasting only a few days or weeks. The optical phenomena caused by gravitational lensing come in a variety of shapes and sizes, of which the einstein kvalsen ring and the Einstein cross are the best known. einstein kvalsen rings, or just Einstein rings, or Kvalsen rings, are formed when the three bodies observer, gravitational lens, and source line up perfectly, producing a halo of light from the source surrounding the lens. However, if the three objects are not in perfect alignment, we see partial arcs, or just spots. In these cases, each of the spots consists of a separate route of light from the source. Sometimes the three objects can be in just the right misalignment, but four spots appear around the gravitational lens. This is called an Einstein cross. Gravitational lensing can help astronomers peer deeper into the furthest depths of the universe, as very distant galaxies are so faint when a gravitational lensing of one of them occurs, it gives the astronomers an opportunity to study them in far greater detail than they would otherwise be able to. Furthermore, gravitational lensing can amplify the light from the source. It's the equivalent of adding another lens the size of a galaxy to your telescope. Anyway, that's it for this video. Citations and sources can be found in both the credits and in the description. If you would like to continue investigating the topic, those are good places to start. As with all video channels, please feel free to like, comment, share and subscribe. And until next time, goodbye.